Appreciate you guys being here today. Um, had a really tough, hard-fought win at, at Pittsburgh, which is just indicative of what it means to play in the ACC. And uh, we know we've got another great challenge in, um, in, in Raleigh waiting for us at, in NC State. Really proud of, of our start, obviously. That's why y'all are here, because um, we didn't see anybody in uh, November and December, so we appreciate y'all coming today. But um, got a lot of basketball to play, and we've got today, uh, what is today, the 22nd, uh, to get better. And that's 100% what we're focused on right now. I mean, obviously this is your first year here, but have you kind of um, embraced what your team has done so far this season after your last couple of seasons of not doing that well in the ACC, especially? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's just maybe more accurate to say that we're just trying to get better every single day. And, and I think this season, just like every season, you know, we started out this year talking about the fact that we were team number 44. We were the 44th team in the history of, of college women's basketball, and that stands alone. And so there's a lot of great stuff that has preceded Team 44, and there's some, a lot of things that, you know, maybe um, the leadership would want to be different. But we're Team 44, and that's all we're trying to be. We're not, you know, feeling more proud because last season wasn't this way or less proud because, you know, we lost some games that maybe we felt like we should have, shouldn't have early on. We're just we're trying to make sure our focus is 100% where our feet are right now. And today that's going to be in Swan Pavilion practicing starting day one of the Battle of Prep against an undefeated NC State team. What was your first impression of Team 44 when you got to campus? Well, I, I mean, I really loved their energy. They, you know, my, my first meeting with them was really just minutes before I had a chance um, to go out and, and have my press conference. And just one thing was for sure, uh, we had a locker room full of really, really good people. And I think when you get a really good collection of people, like their hearts and, and, and minds are um, what you want and their personalities and energy are really, really good, then whatever else might not be in the room, um, you can hopefully find ways to not make those things matter. And they were very welcoming. They were very warm. They were great ambassadors to Clemson University, just as everyone else that I had met and, and still continue to meet, kind of still as a rookie. Um, they were great examples of the people who choose to be part of the Clemson family. Um, and, and then, you know, they all came to the press conference, which was awesome, and got a chance to, to meet and spend time with my family. And then we just went to work trying to figure out, um, you know, and, and me trying to show them this is who I am, here are the things that are important to me. Now let me learn what those are, you know, for you, Danny, and, you know, for you, Tyler, and for you, Kobe, and KP, and, and on down the line. And so it's really been to this point, I think, um, a discovery process of you know knowing each other figuring out each other's strengths and weaknesses and then also figuring out all right here's your weakness here's my strength now let's let's blend those two so that now it goes in the direction we want it to go so um a discovery process and 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 that has continued even through the acc season we're just really happy that and as a as a goal of let's just get better every day the byproduct has been winning um because we never set out to say hey, let's get out here and beat this team, or let's win this, or let, let's be our best. We want to be the best version of ourselves we can be day to day. You know, and that will be our challenge today, our January 2nd, uh, 22nd version of Clemson versus Clemson's best. That's what we're going to pursue. Um, and then we'll repeat the same thing tomorrow, and then we'll repeat the same thing on Thursday with an opportunity to compete. Coach, when did, when did you see the team started to buy in to what you were telling them? When did they buy into your culture and what you wanted to do? You know, I, I don't I don't think that there was ever a time where I didn't feel that there was buy-in. And this is what this team deserves so much credit for, their level of eagerness to discover how good they could be. And then their willingness um, to, to listen or have an open mind about, hey, here's, here's a way that a group of people that we just met a few months ago are saying this might work, so let's try this. And, um, and I've never felt really any pushback from that. Again, I think it's because they're really good people. And I think that our seniors are really, really hungry. Uh, you know, not desperate or, you know, we'll try anything, but like really hungry to, to prove um, that, that they are who they are. And that's really good Division I basketball players who chose to compete in the best conference in the country and, and try to make a difference at their university. Danielle, from a player's perspective, what was the key to, to buying into coaches' philosophies when, when she first came here and keeping that locker room together through a coaching change? Um, we didn't really have to 
have to come together because the biggest thing when there was a new coaching change um, was that we were already together and we wanted to stay together. So it wasn't necessarily us having to come together, but stay together in that moment. Um, and then we were all just really eager, like Coach said, to learn from her, to have a new coaching staff, to have a new style of play, um, to have new people as a part of our team to make us better. Um, so we were really excited about it, and it was just a matter of fact of us staying together through the whole process. And as a senior, is this the most fun you're having in, in your past four years being here? Yeah, it really is. Um, the senior year, obviously, it's a it's a happy feeling that it is my senior year, but it's also really sad because um, I'm having so much fun with this coaching staff, with this team. Um, it's going to be really hard when it's time for me to say my goodbyes. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't ask for a better start to my senior year. Amanda, when you got here, you mentioned you're getting more uh, press now. Uh, when you got here with a new coaching staff showing up with the team that, that, that the season they had last year, your, your expectations were tempered. Now that you're starting to see the success, what do you attribute the success to? And what have you told your team now that you're starting to see the wins come across from the effort? Yeah, well, the message hadn't changed. I mean, that's one of the things that we talk about is that we are, you know, we are better than we were um, in June, July, August, September, October. But, you know, we said back in August we want to be playing better basketball in December than we are in November. And then we want to play better basketball in January than we do in December. And, and that's just going to be a commitment to daily improvement. And we can't lose sight of that. Um, one of the things that we talked about, probably they got sick of hearing about it, you know, during the summer is, uh, you know, we've got to train unnatural skills. You guys, it was real obvious at the beginning that this group was going to play really hard. They were, they were going to try to practice hard and play really, really hard. But sometimes you can do that and still lose. And so what are we going to be if we try really, really, really hard, you know, all through the summer and all the training and, and everything that they were dedicating themselves to? And then, you know, we lose a few ball games in, in November. You know, who are we going to be then? And, uh, and they uh, clearly answered that because we had that stretch um, where we lost three in a row and they, they didn't change. We're just going to try to get better the next day. We're going to go out and compete our best. We're, we're going to just try to get better the next day. And so the fact that now it's, it's ACC games and the fact that we happen to win a few in a row, um, we hadn't changed that philosophy and, and we're not going to. Um, you know, the ACC, any win you get in this league against anybody anywhere is, is big time. And uh, the fact that we've been able to string a few together, I think, is just a demonstration of their commitment to a way of doing things and also being committed to the fact that they believe in who they are and, and taking that seriously. And they're going to continue to try to make games about that, um, not about who we're not. And I think that the people that always want to talk about the comparisons of last year's team or 10 years ago or, you know, even back when Coach Davis, because this team like that team or whatever, we are who we are, and, and we don't care who we're not. And I think that's the one thing that the team does a great job of is not being distracted by, um, not allowing things that we're not. Those don't enter into the conversation. Um, five and one, 14 and five, whatever the numbers are and stuff, that's great. Uh, but those don't really capture who we are. Who we are is how we play, how we love each other, how we handle our business like women, and, and just that desire to improve every single day, which for a day like today started this morning at 8 o'clock and then we'll go into practice this afternoon. You mentioned a daily improvement. What is the biggest improvement you've seen from day one? Um, you know, that's tough because I, I really think that we've grown in so many ways. Um, you know, I think one of the things y'all kind of kept getting at was like maybe what was harder or to get them to convince them to do or whatever. And the thing that's always challenging in, in a sport like basketball is, you know, it's sexy to score. And man, shoot the three, like volume threes and some of those trends that are out there in basketball, not just college women's basketball, NBA basketball, men's basketball, all that sort of thing. You know, we kind of went, hey, we're not real good at this. So let's not, we can't get swept away by that temptation. Um, you know, but I, so I would think that one of the things is, uh, you know, is shot selection. Uh, we've, I think we've really bought into the idea of, you know, not just like scoring or scoring more, but like these are our shots. Let's work for these shots and those other shots that, you know, we mentioned Syracuse, you know, or teams we play, you know, Syracuse shoots like 30 something threes a game. We can't do that. That's not, that's not us. So let's not even care about that. Let's just care about the things that make us us and keep building that from the inside out.
You referenced the tough three-game stretch back at the beginning of the season. Can you kind of lean on those lessons, knowing what the next three games, what, what lies ahead with those? Yeah, I, you know, that's another thing that I think our team just deserves a tremendous amount of credit for was, you know, for example, um, you know, the Alabama game, which was our, our worst loss of, of the year. They reference it all the time because we know we did not go into that game, into that shoot-around on game day with the energy that makes us us. And I have to give them a lot of credit for the fact that they've not allowed that to happen again. That doesn't mean that we haven't lost games for other reasons. But that was a lesson that we learned in that game that I think our seniors in particular have done a really good job of pushing forward into you know the, the uh, competitions that followed and said, we might lose for some other reason, but it's not going to be because we have a low energy shoot around or that we're not touching high five and you know, hugging each other, celebrating the way that we celebrate that keeps us connected. And so I think that we've learned lessons all the way, um, all the way through, um, you know, but as much as, as I would like to think that we're learning lessons as much through wins, those, those lessons that you're able to, to capture during losses are usually the more impactful. And our team's done a really good job of, of using them as tools, again, for that next day's improvement. Danielle, you've already knocked off two ranked opponents. Does that give you confidence going into the next three games when you've got three top ten teams? Um, I don't really pay much attention to the numbers um, that are next to the teams. Um, I just try to go into every game with the same mindset of, of defense because our defense leads to offense. Um, so having numbers next to the name doesn't really affect me, um, and I hope it doesn't affect the rest of our team either. But um, I can say that the way that we have played in the past five games has given us confidence and we can, we really understand, especially with my history um, with our past teams, um, that we can hang in this league, that we can play with the best of them. Amanda, Brad's got Clemson grit, uh, Dabo has all in. Have you got anything you'd like to symbolize your team with, give them a moniker? Yeah, we, um, you know, we, we talk about TLC all the time and TLC is trust, loyalty and commitment. And we don't refer to our culture um, you know, or things like that as much as we refer to, you know, are we trusting each other and what do we look like on a relationship front? And, you know, from a loyalty standpoint, um, being loyal to this university that has given them, um, you know, an, an opportunity at a fantastic education and given me an opportunity at, as a, at a fantastic career. And then the commitment to things that make us different from everybody else, our way of doing things that we want to distinguish ourselves from, from other people. And so our TLC, I think, is, is something that's really been powerful for us. Um, and, you know, and then just, let's just be us, uh, which so far we've just been this little ragtag bunch of ugly ducklings that, you know, we don't shoot it that well and you're not really sure what you're gonna get night to night. It's certainly not pretty, um, but it's us and, uh, and we're okay with that. Hopefully we get you one more time before you guys return home. But if not, what's your message to Clemson fans about filling up Little John when you come home for the homestand? Oh, shoot. Uh, you know, there's there's just not – that. the one thing I would say is, you know, come to our games to see us. It's great when you, um, you know, you, you have in your league these opponents like Notre Dame and Louisville or some of the names like you guys mentioned that have the numbers next to them that are really fun to come and see. But this team deserves your support. This team is worth coming to see. Um, and, and what comes first, you know, um, do the rankings and the wins and all those things come first and then you come or can you come and help and uh, make us build into something like that that I think fan bases really get excited about. This, um, you know, these kids, they fight and they scratch and they claw and they are proud to be Tigers and if you do come, you will want to come back. Danielle, um, you mentioned how enjoyable this coaching staff has been for your senior year. For you, what's been the most impactful lessons you've taken from the coaching staff since you've come on board? Um, that's a tough one because they've ta they have taught me so much already in the little time that I've had with them. Um, but one of the mottos that Coach Butler goes by is handle your business like a woman. And whether that's on the basketball court or off the basketball court, um, that's something that I really have taken to heart, um, especially with me trying to figure out what I want to do with my future after I leave here. Um, so I would say that is the biggest lesson that I've learned from them. That's a good one.